Viewer discretion is advised. Good afternoon, everybody. Naughty Beaver. I want to show you guys a comment. And I want to really show you guys something that I've been waiting for a long time to talk about. Naughty, you have to check out Jason Brashear's channel. He explains everything about the Nostradamus prophecies and humanity's true history. He even has books. But you have to check his videos out. Prepare to have your mind blown. So I'm reading a comment like this on my channel. And there's so many things I've just never told you guys. To start the show off, I want to take you guys back in time to November 2020. And before I even go into that, I'm going to take you to the Bible. A great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. This is the great sign in heaven that the world was looking for. This is everything that I am. This is everything that I was guided to do in this world. And it all hinged around a simple image from the Nostradamus manuscript. It was the story of the dragon of the Bible. The great sign in heaven was written in the stars. And here it is. This is the day that it took place, September 23rd, 2017. When I did the work that I did, and all this time I was waiting on this channel, the key was the fact that it was written in the stars. That was what Nostradamus told me to share with the world. And if you look very closely, this is the crown upon her head. And it's the crown of nine stars, and the nine stars are Leo in and of itself. And next to Leo, he showed me Venus, Mars, and Mercury. And there it is, within it. This is the part that the world didn't know. This is what I was waiting for confirmation. Now, back in time on my channel, this is a woman that I showed you, but she disappeared literally from the face of the earth. What she brought back to the world when she returned is going to blow your mind, truly. So I want to show you her back in time. My higher self said, Naughty, include this woman. My higher self guided me to her channel years ago just to check her out. Listen to her knowledge, but follow her. So this is her. And yeah, and it is the time to heal. And I think for a lot of women at the moment, it is very important to rise up. I received a lot of visions the last few days because at one hand, because of my own process, I guess. And on the other hand, um, I think it's important because of the energy dynamics at the moment. What I'm watching is that the women are the first. They sending impulses. They go new ways. And the masculine energy is following her. When we women don't start, then the old will go, you know? It, nothing will change and this is about us and when we judge each other too you know for example I'm wearing no makeup nothing and I show myself show my wounds how can I do that to show myself to show my face and I'm not perfect how is it possible this is her Back in time, right after I put out this video, she literally vanished off the face of the earth. What she brought back, I cannot wait to share with you. Last night, I found this channel. I don't know how, like everything, I just guided there. But I saw this picture out of the corner of my eye on the YouTube thumbnails, if you will. And my photographic memory I said, hey, that's that girl I was sharing with you. I don't know her name. I have never spoken to her directly whatsoever. I've just been... Quietly, like many channels, they're not on my subscriptions. I just quietly follow channels that I'm guided to. I just keep things to myself. I keep things away from the prying eyes of the machine of this planet. However, 
this might show you the significance of Maddie Beaver. It's going to be over two videos, and I cannot wait to share her story with you guys. Lose your minds. Hey, hey, guys. Very, very nice greetings from Germany. <laughs> I'm Sandra. I'm a psychic medium. I'm a star seed. And I want to share with you a very, very important message. And I hope you will get my message. I'm very sorry for my English skills. I try my best to explain all this um, in English. Yeah, the big question, do we ascend? Or is it only fake? Does the global awakening exist or not? I personally observe that by many of my friends are the star seats. They are confused or they are not sure if the ascension is real. And I want to share with you my personal journey, my story. And I see entities, I see the energetics, and I hope you will get my message. Because I talked about it in one of my previous videos. When you want to watch it, I add this video here. It's actually a very sad video because when you know my previous channel, my channel was called The Magnificent Future. I've uploaded light code transmissions, healing sessions, and many different videos about different star seeds, races, and yeah, it's actually very, very, very sad what happened to me and to my twin flame. Yeah, now you see the situation where I live now. And I can tell you a little bit what I saw energetically in the fourth dimension. I try my best to explain all this in English and I'm not sure if I can talk about everything because I'm not sure what's happening to my channel again, right? But I try my best to explain this and maybe this video helps you to understand what's going on on Earth exactly or do we ascend for real or what's happening? It has started in the year 2020. In 2020, in spring 2020, there was a galactic war above Earth. And many people and also close members and friends, they saw this war on the night sky. This happened, I'm not sure anymore, at February or March. And this war has happened on a weekend. I was awake the whole night. For three days, circa, I was totally awake. I couldn't sleep and I got all the time the message, Sandra, it's forbidden to go to sleep. You have to stay alive. <laughs> Not alive, but it's forbidden to go to bed. You have to stay awake the whole night. And for three days, I was awake. And I felt these explosions, yeah? It was a very, very explosive war above Earth. And many people saw that. Ships, yeah? <laughs> many people saw that. And this has started at 2020. After these wars, I went for a walk for every night, almost. And I saw this amazing... Now, I'm going to stop this. And some of you guys will say, well, Nadi, the Bible said the Great War was three and a half years after the Great Sign. Yes, it did, but you're going to read the Bible a little bit more closely. When you read the Bible, when you interpret what it says, and when you look at the time that it was prophesied to happen, that would bring it into March 6, 2021. I'm going to move to her next message. We're going to have a conversation about what took place to her. She went to the fourth density, the fourth dimension. She was abducted by the Dracos, by Satan, if you will, Lucifer, the Dark Ones, and brought into the world. And she's going to tell you a story beyond imagination, and it is everything that I told you. I can prove every word that she has to say with the work that I've done in secret on this channel. But to make an incredibly long story short, I want you guys to hear this. We have entered the fourth density. The truth about the ascension. We almost died. What happened? They took her to a false ascension matrix. She was kidnapped. She was brought there in the physical. And what the Dracos were doing, the devil, if you will, is they created a false world, 
a perfect duplicate of Earth. But it's all holographic. It's fake. Trump was there. Ashtar Command was there. Earth was there. China was there. Germany was there. They were scanning Earth with our own technology and copying it and trying to duplicate the matrix that we live in. And their plan was to steal our children. It's devastating when you hear this because she bore witness to it all. And she's not the only one. She's gathering other people that were kidnapped as well and taken there. It's beyond imagination what this woman told me. I was dumbfounded last night when I watched this. Because she disappeared off the face of the earth right after I showed you that video. But my higher self told me to document her. So she lost her channel. The Dracos attacked everything. Her PayPal, all her Facebook. LinkedIn, whatever it might be in the world, they wiped her off the face of the earth and then they stole her. They took her to the fourth density. This is, was the fate and future of mankind. But listen to what she says. We had too much darkness, also in higher dimensions. When you want to see this video, please watch it because I shared with you Arcturian teachings. And the Arcturians got a little bit of other consciousness level to us. And they see everything is a journey. And they see the stance between lights and shadows more as a process. Because the Arcturians are nine dimensional beings or above. And they see this process a little bit from the ego perspective. It's like they are an ego, right? So they are flying and they see everything above, right? So, uh-huh, okay, mm-hmm, like this. But when you are staying in lower dimensions, so that means we have this experience between lights and shadows. And this infinite dance between lights and shadows goes up to the 8D dimension. That's what I've personally channeled, and I'm not sure if this resonates with you, right? I saw that we have the stance between lights and shadows also in the 6D dimension or in the 7D dimension. When we ascend to the 8D dimension and we take our physical body with us, that's the point. We have to take our physical body with us. We start to embody everything and it's like we become immortal and our bodies will not age and this is happening when we would ascend to the 8D dimension or above. It's the reason why the Arcturians got this perspective and they see it more like an ego. Everything. Yeah, I talked about it in this video. So, um, why has light won? And what happened exactly in the fourth density? And I want to share with you my personal story. When it's triggering you, please turn this video off and like I said, I can't prove this because I have almost no technical equipment anymore. Marcel also not. So it's hard to share this with you now. But maybe you will feel it. And maybe, like I said, maybe it helps you to understand what's going on on Earth now. And I can tell you guys, light has won. The gate has opened to the fourth density for a few weeks and months ago. All this has started at spring 2021. Oh my God. The Bible says the woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days, spring 2021. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down. What she's just telling you is that they actually invaded the fourth density, which is the devil's domain. It is the lower astral world. They invaded it precisely to the day when the Bible said that they would. It's not our end, my friends. It's their end. That's what she's about to tell you inside of here. That's the archonic inversion of this world. Like, we are the judges and we are the evil ones. We are not. We are the sons and daughters of the living father. 
the Bible was flipped on its head against the people. Instead of rejoicing and celebrating liberation, when I showed you Nostradamus explaining to the world that the great sign in heaven heralds the age of Aquarius, that's what its true purpose was back in time. The sky concerning Lyon foretells by fixed stars and clear signs approaches suddenly the change of age, neither yet for good nor for its evil. This is what I was doing on this channel. I am the man inside this image. The Claws of the Beaver, and it says it's in plain English from Nostradamus. Only one male is ever going to do this. This open scroll is a revelation. There is the one in the two fish which represents the age of Pisces. It's Revelation 12. Revelation 12 opened the doorway to the age of Aquarius. It occurred on December the 21st, 2020. The sun rise over Jerusalem December the 21st, 2020. The very first day of the age of Aquarius. All of it was encoded flawlessly and perfectly inside of here. The meaning behind everything, I cannot wait to show you guys the end of it all, but Nostradamus was correct that the great sign would bring in the age of Aquarius. Nostradamus was correct that Revelation 12 was written in the stars, and this woman is confirming that the Bible was correct on the exact time of a great war in heaven, but it was the devil's domain, not our own. Do you see the difference in this world? That's our conic inversion. It's the people. You're the evil ones. You fall short of God's glory. The earth was about to be taken into the devil's domain, but she's telling you that the gateway to the devil's domain opened up precisely when the Bible said it was going to open. When you move ahead into the Bible, into Revelation 13, the next part of the prophecy says that it also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark. The world now is waking up to the fact that this is the first time in all of recorded human history the world has ever had something forced upon us. Ever. It's exactly when the Bible said it would take place. But know this. The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. The Bible said, in essence, that the devil is going to rule this realm for three and a half years. What she just told you is the gateway to the devil's domain has opened precisely when the Bible said it would. Not out by a day. Spring 2021. In that moment, she was taken into that domain somehow. It's right here in front of our eyes. So the devil was given time to deceive and destroy the earth and to take people over. That's all I can tell you at this point in the video. Do you guys see now the parallels? It's a matter of getting all the information to understand what was taking place. The fourth density is the astral. It's always been the domain of the reptiles, but they are demons. And she will tell you that they're not the physical beings that they appear to be out in the world and out in the heavens and the higher realms. Some are benevolent. Some have ascended in the kingdoms of heaven. But others, a particular group for some reason or other, seem to have pissed off God. And they were banished from the physical universe. So they are demons trapped in the fourth density. And when judgment day comes, they will all vanish. They will be destroyed. See great changes soon, extreme horrors and vengeance cruel. Thus is the moon led by its angel. Heaven approaches the reckoning. If ascension takes place, the human race will move from the third density, or Mother Earth, to the fifth density. What are they going to feed on if we're not here anymore? And hopefully it's well, nothing. Exactly. Judgment Day handed out, isn't it? 
they will have nothing more to feed on. They won't be able to sustain themselves and exist because they don't have souls. They feed on loose energy. It's the only way they can exist in the universe because they do not have the God spark. In this moment, the Bible has clearly stated we will live under this thumb for three and a half years. That's the second part of Nadi Beaver. That was my calling from the beginning. This is the Starseed movement. This is what the Christians are called for, to unite and fight this great evil. But she's going to tell you all of it was rolled out of the heavens. The great final battle is here on the earth. It's us against them. It's mono e mono, mono e demon, I guess, if you want to get technical. That's what they did. So listen closely to the details for only a moment it is. We had a galactic war in 2020 above Earth, but this war has happened in a higher dimension. This war has happened on a weekend, and it was a very explosive war. I felt this war, and it was forbidden for me to go to bed because I was awake the whole night and I was so nervous and I felt... If you think of the dimensions of heaven like this, this is God, all knowing, all seeing, can see everything going on in the universe. This is the way to look at a dimension, if you will, or a density. It began in 2020 at the highest levels of heaven. This is Michael and the angels. If this is God, Michael and the angels, uh, Jesus and Mother Mary, call it whatever you will. The war began there, but let's call this the fourth density, and this is the third density of Earth. Everything was rolled out of the heavens except for the fourth density. The great war against the dragon could only take place inside the fourth density. But then the last chapter is this battle for Earth, if you will, that third density neutral ground. And here it is, and that's what she's about to tell you. It's exactly when the Bible said it would take place. It's unbelievable what I just heard from this woman. I couldn't sleep last night. I was so deep in thought about all of this. I felt these explosions in my entire energy field. So this war has ended in higher dimensions. And since 2020, I feel that this will affect the lower dimensions, this war. And this war will come down to us. The stance between lights and shadows. And I can tell you that this war in 2020 was a very close war. It was very close that the light force reached it to protect us. It was very close. It's not only <laughs> like that, so it was very close. And I felt that this will come down to us since 2020. And in this year, 2021, we had a war in the fourth density. I personally felt that this gate to... You guys see? Michael and the angels fought the devil, if you will, in spring of 2020, when I was losing my mind listening to this. This woman does not quote the Bible. She's an Arcturian starseed here on the Earth. You guys see where I go crazy, but this is what I'm looking for. This is my guidance, and this was said, follow this woman. Know her story, find her again, that type of thing. Because she's multi-density, just like all of us. There's other versions of yourself out there fighting in the universe. This is the version of you that's going to fight this domain, this plane of existence. That's what you're called to do in this time. To the fourth dimension has opened in 2021. So right there, the devil's domain was opened in 2021 in the spring. It's exactly what the Bible said. That's why I'm going crazy right now. I can't even record this video and keep my thoughts at the same time. I, I just can't believe I was hearing it last night. So God gave the devil its authority, exactly as what the Bible had said, exactly when the Bible had said, and it was written in the stars. Then I bring you Nostradamus. Only God declares the future. It is impossible for God to lie. The devil could not overtake the universe. The devil could not do anything outside of it. It's just the way it is in the universe. It's the way it was created. No matter what they tried to do, what technology they got a hold of, what timeline they changed, somehow, some way, the universe rolled everything back right into the devil's domain and on the earth in that portal that timeline opened up precisely when God said it would. During the appearance of the bearded star, the three great princes' enemies make struck from the sky. Earthly peace trembles. 
Paul Tiber floods, serpent put upon the shore. I cannot give you a date for this event. All the world will see is a bearded star blazing in the heavens for seven days and seven nights. The Pope is said to die in this time as well. Prophecy says the whole world will know it, if this being is hurled to the earth. Oh, and I recognized on my channel, and now this is my personal story, and now it gets very, very crazy now. So when you want to watch this, please stay tuned. <laughs> I observed that at April 2021 that I received very strange comments on my channel. Very strange comments, yeah? That people made jokes about me, they made jokes about my English skills or my vocal skills or they wanted to make jokes about my ET pictures, right? I attached many ET pictures um, and this has started at April. So at the beginning I thought, okay, these are only fakers, mobbers, it's okay. So when somebody judges my face or my vocal skills, it's okay. I don't care because I do what I love. But I felt this is an other level. I felt much darkness behind this. And these were not only, um, she looks strange, we make jokes about her. That was an other level. And I observed that a little bit and it became stronger. These attacks became stronger. And then I observed the same on every social platform, on Instagram, on Telegram, on Discord, on Facebook, almost everywhere. And I felt this darkness. And you can imagine that I had conversations with many different people privately also with people who are um, offering the same service, for example. And I had conversations also with people. I felt actually that these are not good people. And I don't know why my intuition guided me to have conversations with them. So, and I can talk about a few people. I was in contact with them on Telegram or on Facebook. And actually, these were not good souls. I felt this. So, but I got the impulse to talk to them. And when all this has started with these bots and robots on my channel, they destroyed my entire platform and confused my community as well. So, these people, I mentioned a few of them. I knew them personal. One of these person, I met this person for a few years ago. And when I saw this person for a few years ago, I felt this energy. And I felt that's a heartless person. Not a good energy, not a good aura. And we hugged each other because I knew this person before. And I was shocked to see this person in real and that the vibration of this person vibrated totally different. And I felt something like it was a cold energy and I felt this person has no soul, no heart. Those that took the mark of the beast. The story that she tells is beyond scary and she does give good warnings inside. If you don't want to know, don't listen, but I'm going to share it in its entirety. So what is taking place in the world? The devil is given three and a half years to play his hand. Those that take the mark of the beast will be punished. That's what the Bible says. Now, when you move into what the Palladian said on the subject, what the world is saying on the subject is completely different from anything you saw in the Bible. These safety measures that the government has forcing upon you is disconnecting people from their souls. What does that mean? You're the living dead. On top of that, when people begin to transform in frequency, whatever frequency they transform into, it will be controlled by whatever being is tuned to the frequency they are transformed into. Her soul resonates at a frequency. So does her body. If her soul is 99.9, .9, her body is 99.9. .9. That's what creates the connection with the heavens. 
is not difficult whatsoever. So your frequency is your divine protection. The stronger the connection you have with God or your oversoul, the more divinely protected you are in this world. This is the importance of meditation and prayer in these times, so maintaining a connection with your higher self or with Jesus or with God or Allah or whatever it is that you follow in this world. That's the divine. If anything is placed into your body or in the airwaves that surround you in this world, that can break into that and alter that frequency in any way, shape, or form, you will lose the connection with your soul. So what happens if something is placed inside needles that changes your frequency to 66.6, .6, let's say? All Satan, all day long. Who is controlling that body? And hopefully you're going to say Satan, yeah. Do you guys see now why the Bible told the world not to take the mark of the beast? In essence, what we're going to see, if nothing has changed in this time, is a zombie apocalypse. Mass psychosis across the planet, but with the Palladians, it's greater control of the reptilians over society. You will be tuned in to the devil's frequency. And if your body changes to the devil's frequency, I'm using analogies here, you will be controlled by the devil. Your soul is perfectly fine up here, but it's lost the connection with your body. That's as far as I can take this show today, because it's absolutely mind-bending what she's going to tell you inside of here. What's in the fourth density? What these damn demons are getting up to? I hope, perhaps, going right back to the start of my show about the comment, there's nothing anybody on earth has to say about Nostradamus I want to hear, but I wasn't called for any of it. I was called to talk about this. I was called to give seven years of my life to the great sign in heaven, and that's what I intend to do. So in this moment, according to her, this is that time where it begins. If the Bible is accurate, the devil will have three and a half years to play his tricks over the earth. So the greatest defense that the earth has is nothing touches your temple. Nothing. Treat a vaccine as you would a gun to your head, quote-unquote, from the Pleiadians. So everybody is going to be different in this world. But this is only the beginning of a show. Believe me when I tell you, it's the wildest thing I could ever show the world. The timing, the dates that she gives, and again, she's not a biblical person. She's an Arcturian star seed. She knows that she's here for this. She's been doing it for years. I followed her for years on her channel. She come back a different being from this experience, and I cannot wait to share it with you guys. And I have to tell you, I saw a war between Trump, now I talk about Trump, the Patriots, and the Dark Force. This is real. That is real for 100%. I saw that with my own eyes. Because when I had this shift or awakening during the night, I saw Trump and I saw the Patriots and it was so easy to talk to them telepathically too. I saw them and they had a fight energetically, the dark force, the negative souls and the Patriots and Trump it is real. I saw it again, again. And I was in contact with them telepathically. It was so easy to talk to the dark force in this dimension and also to the light force, like a telephone. And then I got a message by my light force sisters and brothers and I said, hold the connection to Trump all the time. Hold the connection to Trump. And they attacked us almost every night and they wanted to kill us. <laughs> These entities wanted to kill us, me, myself. <laughs> they wanted to vaccinate us. <laughs> and the light force said, hold the line to Trump. Talk to him. To the Patriots, talk to him. And then I did it. I talked to them and they rescued our lives. <laughs> And I felt at this day, yeah, I saw the Galactic Federation at Würzburg over us. 
And I felt this day when we arrived at this flat that this Galactic Federation, the false Galactic Federation, will attack us now. And this is a totally other level, guys. This is not only, you know, the government here on Earth. This is a totally other level because this is the spiritual false community and they started to attack us. And they used their Anunnaki technologies to attack us. That is crazy now, guys. Please, when this is too much, and when you don't believe this, please turn off. Please turn off. And then I saw the plan by the Dark Force. The horrible plan. Almost only young people. And every young adult had a cell phone. Everyone. And they all the time this. Everyone. And negative frequencies came out of this cell phone. And this cell phone took control over them. I mean, you see it now. Okay, so, but in the other way. Because of these frequencies, these people and technology become one. They had no free will anymore. Songs, tunes, requests, enslaved people, kept prisoner by princes and lords. This future by Headless idiots, by divine prayers, admitted. This cell phone gave them tasks, what they have to do. When the cell phone sent them the frequency to their mind, you have to eat some fast food now, these young people did it. They had no free will anymore. And that was so sad to see this. When the cell phone programmed them or sent them these negative frequencies, um, you have to talk about this subject now. These people started to talk about this subject. When their cell phone said, you have to hate this person, so then these people started to hate this person. The cell phone took control over them for 100% and they became one. I saw technologies there in Leipzig, very strange. And these technologies look like the Tesla Tower, but in a negative way. And only young people, no old people anymore. They were all gone. That was their plan. And they used these technologies to synchronize that technologies with the brain, with the mind, and they become robots. We wanted to buy some food there, but we were surrounded all the time by these young people. They follow us. Maybe the cell phone told them they have to follow us or that they have to hate us because they follow us all the time. They observed us all the time. They made jokes about us all the time. They sent their frequencies to us all the time. And all the time these attacks, everything has heard it there. And then we wanted to go to the organic supermarket and then I saw Ashta. It is no joke. I saw a hologram of Ashta and he looked like a human in front of me. He was in front of me. I saw Ashta. He was very tall. Marcel didn't saw him. I saw him. And he was in this direction like that. I saw him, my impulse, boom. Then I saw him. And he looked similar to these illustrations on Google. Exactly similar. This hairstyle. But his hair shimmered more in silver, not in golden light. And his aura was very cold. They are sick. Totally sick. Then I saw Ashta. I thought I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy. This is Ashta. Now I see the false galactic federation by my own. Yes. And then he returned back like this. He looked at me. Not more. He didn't talk. That was him. And then I said to myself, I said to you that the galactic federation will attack us now. 
the false galactic federation will attack us now we wanted to drive back home with the train and now this is the sad part only these young people no driver in the train nothing and it was almost impossible to drive back home again and there was an old man again there in this train you can imagine who this old man with the red cap and he was the only old man there <laughs> only young people and also these young people surrounded him they looked at him so who is he who is that what is that so and like i said it was very easy in this dimension to talk telepathically to each other like a telephone like that very easily so and i thought i'm going totally crazy and i'm totally lost now what's going on with me and then i looked to this guy to this man with the red cap and he was with us again so and he was there like this i saw him in this position so he didn't move almost his red cap and he looked a little bit different but i felt this is him right so and then i talked to him i asked him so i'm going crazy okay but i tried then I said, um, Trump, is this you? And then he made this. <laughs> and then I said, is this you, Trump? Am I totally crazy or what is going on? Where am I? Where we are? I don't understand this. He looked at me like this. And then he sent me thoughts like, what do you think who I am? And I said, um, when I trust my intuition, I feel this is you. You are Trump. And then he made this. And then I asked him, what do you think about their plans? About the plan of the Cabal? Almost every old person is gone. Only young people. And the technology becomes one with them. They have no free will anymore and they are controlled by technologies. Do you know what he said? They are totally sick. And then I asked him, how is it possible? So why do you join us? I don't understand this. Do you know what he said? Because of you, the gate to the fourth dimension has opened. And then I ran Marcel too, we cried, I cried so much, so is this the end? Is this the end? Are we dying now? This shit was real, this is all real. And then, that was the confirmation. Then I asked Ashta, and then I will end with this video. I will stop then. And then you will understand the Cabal. I asked Ashta, why? Are you doing this? Why do you have this horrible plan for humanity? Why do you want to kill them? And how do you enjoy the suffering of humanity? Why? Do you know what he said? It is fun. That was his answer. It is fun. Because humans are a lower species to us and this is the consciousness level by them it is fun the false galactic federation the false priestess and priests the false ascended masters everything everything and now it is so clear for you to channel your real friends your real sisters and brothers you have the connection to god very clear now and this is my message even when this was close like i said in every dimension this war was very close also in the fourth density again and yes i sacrificed my life very close these people were right because they got technologies to predict the future and they knew actually their plan was 
that we both will die with their technologies. Yeah, like I said, that was the other dimension. Also Kaufland, the German supermarket looked like a laboratory. These houses looked like, what's going on there? These noises, this Tesla tower. So, oh my gosh, but all in the opposite. Yeah, and these frequencies controls, or that was their plan, would control humanity. And these frequencies were so horrible there, they killed the old people. That was their plan. And only the strongest persons will survive. It is a test, yeah? Or it was a game. It is fun. That was the answer, Barsta. I want to show you guys something very personal about the Nostradamus manuscript. You might get a chuckle out of this. If you look closely, there's a little piece of paper that I've never shown you guys. It's on the left side of this figure. And I just want to show you right here. These are the papers that have the Nostradamus prophecies that I wrote down the very first night I saw them. Everything came out of me everything i've never had to change it this is what i thought of when i heard the prophecies the very first time if you guys see how wild and messed up this is when i sat and did everything i just didn't understand where it came from but they've always been with me and i'm left-handed coincidentally this really really made me laugh when i look but some of you guys with an inquisitive mind would say well there's no writing on it and it's got a curl at the end of the paper. I'll zoom in for you guys. Right there. And <laughs> maybe you could explain this little coincidence to me. If you believe, well, it can't have any writing on it. It just got to be blank, kind of rectangular paper with a curl on the end. Maybe you can explain why. I'm probably the only guy on the planet that actually turned his computer desk into a paper towel dispenser. <laughs> if you guys want to see how messed up my life is, just to give an example, I, uh, I'm one of those practical people. I just love having everything at my convenience, but <laughs> there it is. You want the little curl in the paper. It's been sitting, it's always next to me. I'm one of those, like, one side of the table is for, you know, putting things on. There used to be a pad there, but I used it for my mouse. I kind of nailed it to the bottom of this thing and <laughs> turned that into a paper towel dispenser. But that's not the end of it. I want to show you guys something here. If you pay very close attention to this, what do you see right here? It's like it's it's a brown desk or something. Well, yeah, my desk is completely made of brown wood. When you guys look at the true probabilities of me being who I am, you're going to see how crazy and perfect it all is. Not that many people have a brown wood desk. But when you notice, I slide up into the desk. You only have half my body because I've been stuck at this desk for four years and if you look at the picture I only have half a body I'm slid into the brown desk with the white paper towel beside it <laughs> you guys understand <laughs> I'm only half a man that's what's messed up about everything but you got to realize I've been stuck in this room for four years, I've never left it. All I do is look out this window for inspiration. This is my life. This is what it is to be locked up. Not locked up, but stuck at home with mental illness, just leaving the world. This is everything that I am. It's been four years inside this studio. 
And what I love here is the one and the two. It's just something that's been stuck there the whole time. Without a doubt, there is no question that I'm the man of that image. But one of the things that freaks me out about everything, it's like Nostradamus must know what I do in my bed at night. <laughs> Stop following me. Like, it's just beyond imagination, guys, when you see the whole thing. Like, what else do you want from me? I knew who I was back in time, but this desk has been sitting here since the day I moved in. It's never changed. Neither has my uh, <laughs> my paper towel dispenser. But if you want to understand just how I knew originally, here's the Nostradamus prophecy. This is the prophecy of the end of the age. Okay, okay, when you look down here, Century 3, Quatrain 46, we actually look inside these papers and you can see the coffee stains and they've been here since the day I ever started Naughty Beaver four years ago. But if you look, I can find the right page. Century 3, Quatrain 46, the very first night I saw it, I wrote down Leo, the great sign in heaven. I knew that the new age was linked to the great sign in heaven the very first time I ever saw the Nostradamus prophecies. That's what's wild about everything. <laughs> I didn't write this in after the fact. Beyond imagination, guys, just a little taste of Naughty Beaver's life. Love you lots. Mars and the Septic conjoining under cancer, a calamitous war. A short time afterwards, a new king anointed. One who for a long time shall pacify the earth. Revelation 14 Then I looked, and there before me was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion, and with him one hundred and forty-four thousand who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a sound from heaven like the roar of rushing waters and like a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. These are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they remained virgins. They follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They were purchased from among mankind and offered as first fruits to God and the Lamb. No lie was found in their mouths, they are blameless. What is the first thing that you can imagine as you hear the sounds? What is this place? It's like a desert. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tell me you more. See, you can see the camels mm -hmm. and the campfire. Yes. In the night sky, the stars, the sand dunes. And the clothes they're wearing mm -hmm. are like striped caftans. Yes. 
I've got beards. Mm -hmm. Who are these that are in the desert? They're known as Bedouins. Mm -hmm. Focus on yourself. What do you sense? So my mouth is vibrating. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot. Yes. My lips almost feel as if in the modern day they have the girls have Botox lips. Mm -hmm. Yes. It actually feels like my lips are getting bigger. Mm -hmm. Sort of swollen. Yes. And I'm being told now uh, a hallucinogenic. Mm hmm They've got a um oh when I heard your message coming through, mm -hmm. it said call to arms. Yes. So that's the message. Mm -hmm. And with this tribe that I'm with, they give me a bowl. And it comes from one of our plants in the desert. And they give it to the seer, the S-E-E-R of the tribe. Mm -hmm. And yes. it, it makes your lips go quite numb and quite large. Yes, and what is the purpose of this that you're taking? Well, when you take it, you connect it to the gods. Mm -hmm. And then you can have a clearer communication for the tribe. Yes. When they need to receive messages mm -hmm. for the people. All right. So I'd like for you to go ahead and feel that elixir. And tell me what happens as it begins to flow through your bloodstream. Mm, it's starting to go quite a lot through my cheeks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Through my mucous membranes. Yes. I can feel it like a river through my stomach. Mm -hmm. Yes. And my eyes feel as if they are blinking a lot. Mm hmm. You know, like flashes. Yes. So, like, you, yes. very thick, very thick around here. All right. So, I'd like for you to just flow into that state. Allow yourself to just fall and flow into that state. What happens? Well, the very first thing I saw when we started was a circle. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there were beings around the circle. But it was the circle was elevated off the ground, and they were off the ground as well. And it was almost like they were holding on to the circle. Um, almost like they were tapping into something. Mm -hmm. These very, very wise beings. Yes. And in this state, with this elixir, with this connection, are you able to tap in? I see in front of me right now the most massive being and it looks it's got a lion's face. Yes. It's absolutely enormous. And it's, its eyes are looking right through me. Mm -hmm. yes. And although I can't see 
I can see its forehead, I can see its nose, I can see its eyes. Although I can't see the rest of it, I just know that it's a lion. Mm -hmm. Who is this being? This is an energy. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's the energy of the lion. And how does that energy of the lion affect you? So strong. Mm -hmm. It's coming right through me. What happens when it comes through you? I can see a direct line from its forehead all through its nose, right into me, like a torch beam. Yes. And they're showing me all the chakras that are in that and it's almost like they are being fully plugged in, fully charged. So all the chakras are being plugged in. And now in. it's gone right down to my Yeah. And it's gone down into my pelvis, almost like if you give birth. Yes. Right it's... down at the bottom and that is right now is vibrating like phew. Mm -hmm. right through from the below my belly button. Now you may understand what the full armor of God truly is. Yeah, now, now that stopped. That just went through like mm -hmm. a huge surge of energy. Yes. And what is the purpose for aligning these chakras right now? They say warfare. Ah. So we've come up with two terms that just came up in this call to arms and warfare. Can you expand on that? Hmm. Well, now I go back to the circle of the beings, and it's just like on the back of the discourse. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where you have them circling the globe. Yes. And they say it's the 12 disciples and it's the 12 tribes of Israel. And they're calling their people to arms for the battle ahead. They're starting to get them prepared. How is it that you need to prepare for this battle ahead? Well, we just told this one the other day. We gave her a, 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 what you call the pep talk. Yes. She was getting too involved in the rabbit holes again. Mm -hmm. So we had to bring her back into herself. So we now need people to fully engage internally. Mm-hmm and aligned with source to stop getting distracted with the minute, with the tiny little things all around them yes. and to focus on the task at hand. They're going to need their energy and there are many distractions that are being offered to them at the moment, one being the Olympics. Mm -hmm. It was one of the big distractions so they are being offered entertainment there'll be more entertainment so they need to start switching off more and more mm -hmm. and they need to start switching on themselves much more they need to now start monitoring their blue light the blue light from the computers from the cell phones from the television stations and they need to start connecting with the violet light, mm -hmm. with, yes. the light with the light within. Yes. They need to start concentrating on their frequency rather than a frequency that is outside of themselves. For they always aligned with the eternal frequency internally 
and this one's frequency we've ramped it up and that's why as you were talking to her just now you started activating her and she could start feeling it in her teeth in her cheekbones and then her <clears throat> excuse me her eyes so this vibration that jill's feeling where's it coming from from the source mm -hmm. what is the message purity mm -hmm. yes this is a time for pure thoughts okay lack of distraction mm -hmm. back to basics yes so Jill and I are both focused on the same thing which is a new place why are we being led to this because you need space mm. you need space around you without the interference of the frequency from others yes from the lower frequencies and both of you are where there's more land than what you have presently mm -hmm. and you'll be able to connect more deeply with the earth with nature with less lower energetic frequencies being bombarded at you and through you okay for everywhere you go you are like a cell tower yes and the lighter you shine the more that is attracted to you and through you mm -hmm. so that's why it's so important to do the meditation in the morning and set the intention and set the protection and this new move for both of you is going to grow both of you exponentially hmm. your connection is going to deepen and your messages are going to be thorough and very very clear for humanity needs to hear these voices at this time okay very good during the discourse I was told that there was a tree waiting for me and the tree is there waiting for me how can we deepen the connection with nature well they've given me a name for that tree hmm. they call it the tree of knowledge yes and this one was told very long time ago about knowledge they said you might know something you might read many books you might visit many libraries but unless you actually walk out onto the ledge walk out into life and experience it you will know about it but you won't have the wisdom so you have to have the knowing and then the ledge the experience and together that will give you the knowledge and it is much deeper knowing and experience two completely different things mm -hmm. but this tree of knowledge that is waiting for you this one told you about the hammocks yes. in the tree in the trees and she could see them hanging absorbing and almost like a reflection of the inner from the tree onto the outer of the human and Alba you are correct when you are wanting a retreat as such within this ancient wisdom or you have a meditation that takes people through the forest through the ancient trees with the majestic tree trunks that yes. have been quietly holding their space and giving of the oxygen all the time for when these visitors arrive at this place of knowledge they will be absorbing the knowledge from all those trees from all that wisdom and they will be deeply grounded 
and then they will be able to return to their everyday lives fully charged mm -hmm. with new energy and a new way of thinking and a new way of thinking and a new way of thinking and a new way of being. Uh, it's not in the Bible originally. And so he said it would all return to the way religion was supposed to be when Jesus set it up 2,000 years ago. When Jesus set it up, he called it the way. And it was supposed to be having meetings just like this and people in people's homes and people sharing their knowledge and their abilities, teaching each other how to heal and all about love. That was what religion was supposed to be. And that's what Jesus taught when he was doing his uh, traveling. But man took everything and turned it around, changed it, and he ended up being crucified. They never understood what it was really all about. Pope Francis, Peter of Rome, the final pope of the earth, the betrayer of Christianity, the head of the Jesuit order are Satanists. Francis betrayed Christianity by telling them to take the mark of the beast. But Nostradamus said that religion will return the way it's supposed to be. So we're in for a whole wonderful thing when this, um, the great genius comes and we go into a whole new way of thinking. The great genius comes and we go into a whole new way of thinking. And a new way of thinking and a new way of being. So that place with your tree is a place that is needed during these troubled times ahead. Mm -hmm. It is a charging of the light force within many. Very good. And for those who don't have a place like this that I'm going to, how can they charge? Well, you have a human called Joe Dispenza on your earth plane. Yes. And he's run many tests, scientific tests, where he has participants that visualize, visualize that they can play the piano, mm -hmm. visualize that if their hand is encapsulated, but if they start exercising it in their imagination, that it grows in strength. So as you have your tree, they can be in an apartment block, they they can be in an aeroplane, they can be on a boat, and they can imagine lying on a soft, mossy bed of earth, being protected by the huge trees and their canopy of leaves. They can have as many trees in their forest as they wish or they can climb up the tree and attach a hammock and lie in the hammock and imagine the cool breeze and the connection and the root structure going straight into Gaia. for everything starts in the mind. But of course, it is preferable to be in nature and those that are in cities can find a park, a piece of grass, sit next to water, or in their apartments, find a sunny spot, lie on their back and look at the clouds and connect with nature as much as possible. Very good. During our previous talks, we talked about the photons in our bodies that were changing. Has anything changed since then? Yes, you and this one has received multiple downloads since then. Mm -hmm. For the 
subatomic structure is a constant upgrade as you have your computers. And then you've got number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number 10, and so on. Each yes. one getting different orchestrations within. So is it within your body? As you get more finely tuned, your understanding of situations in your life and with others, there seems then to be a larger capacity for compassion mm -hmm. and love as the judgment starts falling away more and more. So the stronger the downloads, the more capacity for allow others to be. And the knowledge that the universal plan is all in place, that the stress that many are feeling will then start falling away. For did not Yeshua say, anchor in me, use him as the anchor. But many forget that that session was just the other day. That message came out loud and strong for many. Yes. And yet humans are being so distracted by the outside, by the calamity, by the fear, that they forget about the eternal anchor. Hmm. Yes. Can you tell me how this uh, is also affecting the body? I, I get a lot of people telling me that they are feeling many aches and pains in their bodies. What's happening? Well, it takes energy for a cell structure to alter for an upgrade to take place. It is an energy exchange. So the old energy firstly has to be removed for the new for space for the new energy to be implemented. Mm -hmm. So as a result, that is like an extraction as if you're having a tooth extracted and it can be a little bit painful when the injection wears off. Yes. So in the different areas of the body, the aches and pains will start happening. So people should give thanks for the aches and pains, mm -hmm. for it shows them that there's an upgrade happening, that we are preparing them for the times ahead. Because did we not say that we wanted you to be lighter? And maybe you didn't understand that fully. But in order to be lighter, one needs to see lighter and move lighter. And so a lighter load of energy, more wattage being put into the system. And so the older, heavier parts of the system have to fall away. And so that's the process of pain, because did we not say when you are plugged into the switchboard of the old feelings, because you are so programmed and heavily involved in those areas that the energy has been doing that particular circuit for many, many years. So it'll be painful to pull them out, but by putting into the new upgraded system, it's a much, much lighter load and it will cause greater family unity, greater friendships, this is what is needed for a lighter golden era. Mm -hmm. And before the race is built anew, a silver serpent comes to view, and spew out men of like unknown, to mingle with the earth now grown, cold from its heat and these men can, enlighten the minds of future men, to intermingle and show them how, to live and love and thus endow, the children with the second sight, a natural thing so that they might grow graceful, humble, and when they do, the golden age will start anew. The mother shipped in prophecy.
I know how you think. I see right through you. You cannot hide from me. I am Yasuki, Sophia Svaru, the consciousness from which all the other beings in my group emanate from. I am the core. I am the nucleus. I speak for them because I am them all. I need not be humble, because I speak the truth. They are all independent creatures and people. And from their point of view, them, all together, make up who I am. My consciousness is the result of them, and they are the result of me. I know you are moving to eliminate the vast majority of the people who inhabit Earth, people that call themselves humans. But your efforts will bleed off eliminating countless other creatures that depend on them for their very existence. I know you think eliminating the human population is the only way to save the Earth from ecosystem collapse due to over-exploitation and human greed. I see a great famine drawing near, often returns, then becomes universal. So great and long, they are plucking roots from the ground and children from the breast. I know you feel the human population is an ignorant, easily manipulated, self-centered, dangerous species that, if not dealt with, will eventually, sooner than later, collapse Earth's biology. And you see no other option. I know you are also following the directives of entities that are asking you to do so, for them to feed from human suffering. Entities you have created as elaborated millennial old dark tulpas and egregors. I know they are all of your creation. You have removed yourself from the perception of pertaining to the human collective. And, as apart from them, all the cause and effect you yourselves call karma will fall upon your shoulders tenfold. Those dark entities that I know are real are of your creation and their very existence is of your responsibility and yours only, as you have coerced, tricked, forced and manipulated the human population to help you feed them and make them spawn into the human collective's reality. That is on you, and not on the humans. I know you feel Eliminating the human population is the only option. And I know that in your twisted minds you think it is the only option. And that you are doing so with good intentions and in a humane manner. I know you think it is either the humans or planet Earth and all its ecosystems. I also know that it is not the only way to solve what you consider to be a problem to many humans in your perception. 
And I also know that you very well know that as well. You know there are other options. I know you do not implement those other options because you live in grave fear of being discovered by the human population at large as the perpetrators of so many atrocities you and your power thirsty control group have intentionally brought on to humankind throughout millennia now. Should the greater human population dawn to the fact of who you are and realize all your trickery, they would chase you to the end of the earth and lynch you all in a very human manner, as taught to do and behave so by you. I know you have manipulated the human population into believing a totally false reality with false rules and laws, both legal and natural. You have imposed millennia of lies and trickery upon them. I know the human population is a reflection of you in the power elite group, so the chaos on earth is on you. I also know that you are the reflection of the human population, of their belief systems, morals, ethics and spirituality. All three manipulated by you for personal gain and to remain in power. I know this created a vicious circle in which you manipulate the human population into believing your lies and then in turn manifest and feed your existence. But you in the power elite group have managed to hold control, so you could have directed the human population into perceiving things in a more compassionate, loving and positive manner. I know you could end all the chaos in days if you wanted to, and I know you chose not to. I know you are following commands of entities, creatures and people not from Earth. This is no excuse to comply with such level of atrocities and it will not redeem you from the responsibility and of its resulting inescapable karma. Karma as in cause and effect, and not only as you perceive it to be. You will not be able to clean your hands from your evil wrongdoings against the human population at large. Your trickery and twisting of facts as well as your lies and manipulative ways towards the human population, will not move such karma on them and away from you all in the control group, however you call yourselves as you always hide behind multiple names. You can't hide. I see you all. I know you manipulate reality through altering and guiding human perception. And I know most humans are in for the experience, but there is an ethical limit to all that suffering, and that limit is set from above you all, and from above Federation levels, and in higher realms that are unlooking everything. And they do not forgive, as they will be permissive to the karma, cause and effect that you will bring upon yourselves. You in the control group live in fear, and you reflect it onto the human population, making them all live in fear as well. I know what you are doing, and how you think reading them, the humans. I see you from the astral. 
I attend your meetings. I feel your twisted emotions, and I look at your dark egregors in the eye, and command you all to stop immediately. You are only sinking yourself even more by complying with darkness and suffering, and I warn you all, it will come down on you tenfold. You have poisoned enough people with your false potions. That promise to alleviate the fear you have implemented with trickery and manipulation, to solve a problem you have created, and that is non-existent, because I know there is no bug. You are only making the human population at large fear something intangible and unseeable, to distract them all from the real danger that is you. Your power thirst and your lies. You have already poisoned enough people with your potions, using lies and manipulation, coercion and cornering, exploiting their ignorance and the lack of vision and understanding of most. Lack of vision and understanding you caused, so the fault is on you. The karma. Cause and effect is on you. Do not continue to force your potions upon the remaining population of Earth that is in the know, or you will be trespassing all kinds of stellar, natural, and the very laws of existence and free will, laws of mirrors, and all that go by similar names, laws. Higher beings know and observe laws that spawn from source itself. Leave those people in the know alone, and do not press on them to take your false potions any longer. And immediately ease off from all restrictions. You have already done enough harm. Forcing and coercing people in the know. Will result in the direct consequence of karma cause and effect upon you and your control group, that I know is made up of humans, non-humans, stellar races, and a zoo of evil egregors of your own creation and responsibility. Forcing the population against their free will and right to decide over their own existence will come down upon you in terrible ways you cannot even start to imagine, and all by exact measure and consequence, and of your own hand and doing. For those who have understood, for those who have received, it is time. Returning to your scripture will not save you. Bending to your knees will not please anyone. That time is past. This time is now. You are the judged. You are the chosen. I'm here to break the mirror so you shall see on what side you stand. What you see. Will be your choosing. Stop now. The people in the know cannot be touched. They are not falling for your trickery, and if you do not stop now, this will forever follow you as terrible karma you will have to pay through countless of your future incarnations. If you proceed. To eliminate all the human population on Earth, leaving only the ones you fully control, and with the intention to fully exploit them, you will eliminate yourselves as well. Ease off with your restrictions and destructive, fully regressive agendas. Now, you have no excuse. I have spoken.
The name of my physical vessel is Sofia Svaru Yaski. By now, I know you recognize who I am and who I have been. I am the original Sofia, and you know it. And I am back, and these are all my people, not yours. I am them all, and they are me. This is a warning. My consciousness envelops and comes from where you call higher planes. I only work through the frail and small body of a little girl. And as a little girl, not unlike the millions of others, you, the ones in control, have tortured and exploited in unimaginable ways. My consciousness chooses to use her as means of communication from above to command you to stop. I am small, I am frail, but my mind is not. Frail, innocent, feminine and small, yet stronger than you all. Leave the people of Earth in the know alone. Those in the know do not consent to your coercion. They do not consent. I do not consent. Stop now. We are watching you all from above.